So here we go, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Itchus Town Profiles, the series where we put a spotlight on town former players. And today we're discussing Frank Yallop, the Canadian left back, full back, different positions he played. I'm joined by good old Dan as we take a timeline chat on his career. Uh, Dan, thanks for joining me. Frank Yallop, what, what do you think straight away when you hear his name? Seven. He always, always seemed to be seven out of ten. And nevertheless, he was Mr. Mr. Dependable. Very, very dependable defender, very loyal servant to the club, played at a time which was down and a bit of up, but more or less he was, uh, yeah, really, really, really solid, really solid defender. Um, and I'm looking forward to speaking about him. Definitely. Uh, yeah, very before my time, but I'm a player that I've done my research on and, um, yeah, has a very good connection with the club. You know, 10 plus years, testimonial in the Hall of Fame now. But let's, Dad, let's go through his timeline at the club. Um, joined in the 80s from Canada. He's born in Watford, but um, moved to Canada with his family. Um, mm -hmm. But then signed for us back in the 80s, um, very young, uh, under Bobby Robson. Then, of course, Bobby Ferguson came manager. Uh, made his debut against Everton in 84 under Bobby Ferguson. Um, any little nuggets from yourself from his early days at town? Yes, yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. F funnily enough, I looked, I found out the day he was born, the day he entered the world, April the 4th, 1964, he was born in Watford and a few miles away, Ipswich lost 6-3 at Tottenham at White Hart Lane. On that very day, Frank Allop arrived and White Hart Lane was going to prove to be a particular highlight of his career. So not only was he born there, he was to score that wonder goal at White Hart Lane as well. Um Beatlemania, the height of the Beatles were top of the charts in America with five singles in the top five. For you younger listeners, you might have to YouTube the Beatles, but the greatest ever band of all time. Anyway, Watford boy, and he basically left Watford at the age of 10. His dad was a meat cutter and um, got a job in Canada with his brother. So he took Frank and his two brothers and sisters all the way over to Vancouver at the age of 10. Four years later, when he was playing football, Ipswich had just won the FA Cup final, beat Arsenal. And at the end of that season, to, for basically a celebration, they flew to Vancouver for an end-of-season game and played the Vancouver Whitecaps. And Yana was basically spotted in one of the local games when they were over there by a scout. Um, and subsequently was invited over to, to Portman Road. So that's funny enough. He was born in Watford and grew up in Watford and had to go all the way over to the other side of the world before coming back. Just before we kind of go into it, Ipswich, have, funny enough, had had a bit of a Canadian connection before Frank turned up. So we actually toured there first of all in 1969 for a pre-season game. And incredibly, on the 20th of July, 1969, Ipswich played a pre-season game against Vancouver Spartans and it was on the same day as the televised moon landings. Oh, wow. So probably the greatest event in world history, we played Vancouver on the same day and we got a crowd of 3,000 at that match, which I think is pretty impressive that 3,000 locals turn out to watch a Vancouver Ipswich when Neil Armstrong was doing his thing on the moon. Anyway, from that kind of highlight, he came over, Bobby Robson signed him, but he didn't, as you say, he didn't play much under Bobby Robson. He made his debut the 83-84 season um, at Everton. I think his first three away games as a 19-year-old were Goodison Park, Anfield and Old Trafford, which was some debut for a 19-year-old. And actually that first season he played, he was good. Ipswich at the end of that season went on a brilliant run. Um, and we we survived relegation, and that was his baptism into the, into Ipswich colours. Unfortunately, um, he didn't really break through into two seasons afterwards, and that was the season we, we kind of um, lost uh, Division One status at the time, and we we went down into into the first division, and that's really when he began to you know, early 20s, began to blossom. He was 
managed firstly under Bobby Ferguson and then the majority of his career was under John Duncombe, who um, I was watching Ipswich every other week then, so I saw a lot of Yallop, but he was he was a very kind of very dependable right back in a 4-4-2, um, not like your Wes Burns of these days or Kane Vincent Young's flying down the wing, or he, he was to do that a bit later, but he was a very solid, very solid right back in a... Let's face it, a pretty poor team and not a brilliant era at Ipswich Town, but he was Mr. Reliable. Um, he, he, I think he won Player of the Year in 87 88. He, he was playing at least 35 40 games for four seasons straight. He played, uh, John Lyle then arrived at the club, and Frank played in his first season, Lyle, while he was sorting the team out. He played a lot. The season we went up in 91 92. That's when probably Frank started to, um, he started off that season and then was replaced by Mickey Stockwell due to an injury. Didn't really get back in, in that team, but probably testament to how great Yallop was, you know, he was clearly a positive influence on the training ground and in the dressing room. He was, he stayed and, had his testimonial uh, that yeah. sort of with the first season back in the Premier League um, when they had kind of half built the North Stand and we played West Ham at home uh, the week before the Premier League season started. And that was Frank Gallup's testimonial. So he was given a testimonial and he was the longest serving pro at the time, but struggled to get in the team even then um, and was, uh, you know, in and out the team. Sam Allardyce signed him on loan at Blackpool for three games. Um, he was, he's a good player, Yala. But yeah. then, out of nowhere, um, that season, the Premier League, we were doing all right, and then we played Tottenham away, and he got his chance. And I think Stockwell was injured, funnily enough, and he, he replaced Stockwell at White Hart Lane. It was a Wednesday night. He hadn't scored for four years. And you can look at this on YouTube, because it's mm. fortunately for him there scored at White Hart Lane his first goal in four years in a 2-0 win. It was by far and away the best away performance of the season up till that point. And it was one of the best goals you'll ever see. 30-yard rocket into the top corner at, at, West, at, at Spurs. I think they call it limbs behind the goal. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was... Yeah. I mean, it was a shock. It was uh, but a fantastic strike from about 30 mm. yards out. And then four days, well, three days later, we come back to Portman Road. The leaders, Man United, come to town. There's Man United all over the ground. They're in the North Stand, they're in the Church, and Kanchelskis, Giggs, Sharp, Ince, you name it, they had it. And lo and behold, um, Frank Gallup, beginning of the second half, Scores to put us 2 0 up. Another amazing goal, all captured on the cameras, all captured on the telly. Um, you can see he doesn't really quite know how to celebrate, even though it's his second goal in two games. Um, and it's very similar to the Fabian Wilness goal, if you remember it. Mm. Um, that night we drew with Man United, and, and Yallop's flying down the right hand side and puts it past Schmeichel into the church. And so it was, it was like kind of a, a really interesting one, Yallop, because he had seasons of consistency. And then when he probably had his highest moments when he wasn't featuring as much, what then happened was, uh, you know, Lyle moved on and Mick McGivern. And unfortunately, that season where we went down from the Premier League, he Frank played pretty much every game. I think the only game he didn't play was a 9-0 at, at Man United. Funny enough, I'm sure he's happy about that one. Yeah, <laughs> Exactly, but yeah. you know that was that was kind of the um, the, the full stop on a on a really really good career, and um, I think uh, you know a lot of people who watched the town back then of my um, age will will remember him very fondly, and obviously since then he's um, had connections with us ever since, and has and has done absolutely amazingly for himself. Really, when you look at his what, what he's gone on to do. Yeah, you know, he's, he's a player that... Because we've, as you said, with Canadian connection, we've had, of course, Craig Forrest, we've had Jason DeVos in, in recent times, yeah. um, but we've always had that little connection with Canada. And, um, you know, 385 games, eight goals, 
And as you said, to break that four-year duck, we're not scoring, scoring two absolute belters against two top teams in the Premier League. Yeah. Not too bad, Frank, not too bad. But as you said, you know, he's got a nice connection with the current owners now. A lot of us have to thank Frank for the um, game changer and stuff because I think he had a little chinwag with Brett Johnson and co. And uh, yeah, Frank, you had a big one to sort of thank for that. And as you mentioned, he's gone on to coach in America, um, signed David Beckham at LA Galaxy. And as you said, he's, he's highly thought of in America. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he went, obviously, when he left Ipswich, he, his family was still in North America and he ended up playing in Tampa Bay for one season. Um, that was his like last career and he was absolutely fantastic for Tampa Bay. And, and clearly, you know, someone that had been signed and initially managed by Bobby Robson and played 300 odd games is going to learn a lot. And um, t- just basically went into coaching and management and, and, um, by all accounts, when you hear he, he did a, an amazing job for a, a team called San Jose Earthquakes, where he he turned them round and they they won the kind of title in America, and they were a team that never gave up. Were famous for their dramatic kind of comebacks and late goals and their fighting spirit, and they played in a manner that Frank Gallup was. He was massively well respected. Um, by all accounts, players used to love playing for him. He was very honest. You knew where you stood, and and he had a he had a brilliant career. You know, he, San Jose was just one great moment. He then went on to to manage Canada. He then signed Beckham at LA Galaxy, um, and yeah, I mean, he was obviously someone that always had the ear of people over there and was was well respected. And as you say, he got. Um, um, a bit of time at Phoenix Rising, yeah. Um, and um, I think now he is the head coach of a team in the same level as Phoenix Rising called um Modern Foray. Um, and I was looking at his career thinking he's to be fair, he's lived in some very cool places, Frank. Yeah, yes. he's like Los Angeles, Tampa Bay, <laughs> Phoenix, Ipswich. <laughs> Ipswich. <laughs> well, I mean, you can't obviously be suffered. In yeah. the late eighties, that is that's yeah. the best. But I mean, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, and I think it was brilliant that you know, you know, he's 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 kind of uh, he's, you know stayed in connection with the club and yeah. um, speaks really positively about the, the new ownership. So great, great, yeah, just a really, really, really good player. I don't think I ever remember him ever making a bad error or. Uh, had a like a as I say, even had a five or six out of ten. He was always even when you lost, and we lost a lot under John Duncan. Even when you lost, Gallup was always up there. Yeah, and you know a player that got a testimonial. You know, not many players get that. You know, dur- during the eighties and nineties, we had a lot actually who got testimonials. But yeah. a player that deserved it, of course, and is now inducted to the Hall of Fame. He's part of that very good collection of players. Part of that, um, fully deserved. Um, but yeah, Dan. Frank Yallop, final words on him as a player. Um, any other memories, yeah. personal that, memories? That, well, that, that, that testimonial was a funny one, right? Because it was a double testimonial. Because what happened was we played West Ham the season for the Premier League and it was quite a serious game. I mean, John Lyle didn't watch it because he was away watching Villa, scouting Villa. And West Ham booked their first team. So it was one of those testimonials where people, we were both teams were at each other. You know, but it it was quite good. And I remember before then, they had a double game when it was like the Ipswich Legends played the Colchester Legends before Ipswich West had. And uh, it you had people like War uh, Alan Brazil. I remember Alan Brazil playing for the Ipswich Legends, and I'm amazed they found a top that could fit him. Yeah. Legend that he is. Uh, it was just a really funny day. It was baking hot weather, and um, you had like. Th- three hours of football, um, which I always remember. But, yeah, as you say, like back in the day, you didn't really get a testimonial. So, um, yeah, be, yeah, be, it, uh, you know, um, I just think with, with, with Yalap, it's just uh, it's, it's just really nice to see someone, as I say, from, from relatively humble beginnings, um, how you can, what you can build your life out of something. And, and really, you probably would say that, it's kind of his attitude and his his man management and what, who he is as a human being has been a big part of that. So, 
will always get a brilliant welcome uh, at Portman Road. Always. Definitely. Well, there we go then. A uh, profile on Frank Yallop. Um, Player of the Year in 87-88. Testimonial. Goals against West, uh, West Ham, Spurs and May United. Um, let us know in the comments down below your thoughts, your memory to Frank. And uh, thanks again for watching. We'll be back for another edition of Itchy's Town Profiles very soon. Bye-bye for now.